excited to, to get to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Mark Cabrio. Um, we've talked a lot about range this morning, and I think this is an interesting juxtaposition to have the electric and the Abarth Cabrio in the same room because it really shows the range of the Fiat 500 line that we can do this uh, you know, very, very, well, they're both really very California cars, aren't they? Um, this one in, in line with the Eco Chic, and, and this one more in line with the Canyons that we'll be driving this afternoon. And so I think it's, uh, it, it presents an interesting opportunity to, to sample two very California cars for very different reasons. And so that's why I, I couldn't be happier to be here in this place to, to talk about these cars with you. Basically, as, as Tim said earlier, the, the mission of this car is, is fun, right? To capture the, uh, the, the spirit of the Abarth hatch, which uh, I see a lot of familiar faces here from our event back in, uh, in Las Vegas in February when we launched the Abarth hatch. Uh, capture that fun uh, and, and exciting drive and a very accessible drive, except now amplify it with the open air uh, capabilities of, of the soft top. So uh, again, technical highlights. Much of it's carried over from the Abarth hatch, but that's just, uh, just a quick refresher. Uh, starts obviously with the, with the powertrain, turbocharged 1.4 liter engine with uh, fuel saving multi-air technology. Allows you to get 160 horsepower, 170 foot-pounds of torque uh, in the sport mode. And um, that's obviously coupled with 34 miles to the gallon on the highway thanks to, thanks to multi-air. That turbocharger uh, obviously makes a lot of heat, so the, the charge is cooled by two low-mounted intercoolers, again, carried over from the Abarth hatch. You can see they're fed by these outboard uh, intakes here. We've actually lengthened the car uh, 2.7 inches to accommodate the packaging space for those intercoolers and that turbocharger. You notice down at the bottom of the fascia here, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a chin lift, chin spoiler there. That is what allows us to get neutral lift all the way up to the maximum speed of the vehicle. Uh, another one of the important things, particularly at the front end, to keep, the, keep as much front axle grip in the car up to very high speeds. It all goes back to, to, to track credibility for the car. Speaking of uh, aggressive driving use, like you'll, you'll do today or maybe like you do on a racetrack, uh, you'll notice we've got the optional 17-inch forged aluminum wheel in this car. It comes with three-season uh, Pirelli performance tires. And it's all hauled down by an 11.1 inch front brake with an aggressive semi-metallic uh, sort of motorsports credible brake lining. Um, we have a very aggressive front camber set up on the car, 10% quicker steering rack. Everything, we've done everything we can in order to get the car to be very responsive, very neutral, very rewarding, and yet remain very approachable to all levels of driver. Inside the car, you'll see a lot of the familiar Abarth experience, except now with, with more natural light. Uh, obviously, it starts with the, the touch points, so we have, still have the aggressive uh, high back integrated headrest, aggressively bolstered uh, motorsport seat with the integrated uh, racing harness pass through in the seat back. Again, touch points, steering wheel is very chunky, flat bottom, very, uh, very aggressive in terms of thumb rests, and, and uh, I, I think a very, very pleasant thing to hold, as well as the shift knob, very, again, large, chunky. Um, has the, has the feel of, of really capable hardware. Series standard boost gauge, including a drag racer's shift light, allows you to keep tabs on your engine and also extract maximum acceleration performance. And I'd like to talk about two buttons on the dash that you can play with while you're out on the canyon roads today. The sport button is uh, my favorite button in the car. I tend to push it every time I start the car. Uh, and that is what gives you the extra 20 foot-pounds of torque, up to 170 foot-pounds of torque. And it also gives you a more aggressive steering calibration for more responsiveness, more aggressive throttle pedal calibration. Uh, we've tried to drive those two modes very far apart to, to make them very distinct and to give the car uh, multiple personality as much as possible. Speaking of multiple personality, obviously, the top goes down. Uh, one of the great things about this convertible, as opposed to maybe some others in its segment, is the fully formed side aperture. And so obviously that uh, gives us major benefits in terms of torsional rigidity, which allows us to maintain a pretty high spring rate, and uh, obviously allows us to maintain our 15 millimeter lower ride height, and, uh, and a virtual absence of cowl shake is something that's really notable in this car, particularly for an aggressive suspension tuning. It's really allowed us to, to keep the, the chassis character that we wanted in the car um, because we have so much body rigidity. Uh, so the car just feels rock solid in, in really any driving environment. Uh, one such driving environment you might find this car in uh, would be on a racetrack. And, and so, for every owner who, who buys this car, we include a one-day Abarth track experience. 
And this is uh, very similar to what you may have heard of with the SRT track experience. It's an opportunity to ride with a professional driver, um, get some tips, and, and again, it all comes back to what Tim said this morning about uh, making sure that the car is accessible to everyone. Uh, making sure that, yes, we've got, uh, we've got the ability to really approach the limits just driving around on public roads, which uh, I'm sure you'll do this afternoon. Please be careful. There are a lot of pedestrians out there. Um, and, and so we wanted to give the chance for everyone to have a day with a professional driver, get some, get some tips and pointers on exactly how to, how to get the most out of the car.